Two of the scariest things about stories that feature mummies are the following. First, being buried alive. Not many people seem to make a big deal out of this, but every single major motion picture that features a mummy at least alludes to someone being buried alive, and that's horrifying. Secondly, there's the gruesome medical details associated with funerary preparation, including, but not limited to, scooping out someone's organs and putting them in jars, drying up their flesh with salt, wrapping them in bandages, and then interring them. And when you look at the horror of being buried alive, at the horror of funerary preparations, you realize both of these are body horror. The scariest mummy stories, in other words, should have a lot of body horror, and ours certainly will. Welcome to PhD and D, everyone. We're going to talk about the desert domain of Har Akir, a domain of Ravenloft. This domain is set in a desert, which is supposed to be analogous to classical Egypt. And the domain of Har Akir is ruled by a pharaoh, Ankhtapat, who is a mummy lord, undying. There are a lot of really fun themes in this domain, so what we're going to do is go over a few different cultural touchstones which we can use to get an imaginative grip on the domain, and then we will sketch out an adventure which will take player characters from levels 9 to 14. This adventure will be based on the Canopic Being from Candlekeep Mysteries, as well as the Fane of the Night Serpent from Tomb of Annihilation. So spoilers for both of those. First, of course, the cultural touchstones, and I guess we'll begin with the obvious, 1999's film The Mummy. Yes, we have to mention this. If you want a really fun, action-packed demonstration about how a mummy lord could be an adversary, take a look at this movie. It's not without its problems, it hasn't aged perfectly, but it definitely helps secure a feel of what a mummy might be like as a powerful antagonist. Secondly, and perhaps less obviously, is the 1988 Wes Craven film The Serpent and the Rainbow. It too has not aged with perfection, but the central theme of being buried alive and the embellishment of that particular horror is ingenious and it'll help us keep a grip on the kinds of horrors that we'll want to subject our player characters to in our adventure. Along with The Serpent in the Rainbow, there's the tale by Edgar Allan Poe, The Premature Burial from 1850. This too will be really helpful for us. Our adventure is going to begin with the player characters getting buried alive, so this is some valuable inspiration here, because that's the topic. Additionally, there's The Charnel God by Clark Ashton Smith, published in 1934. The setting of this short story is a whole city that worships a god that consumes corpses, and corpses are treated as a kind of sacred commodity. The commodification of corpses, their strange religious value, and the plot focus on their interment all serve as valuable inspiration for doing a Har Akir adventure. And finally, there's a non-fiction book from 2002 by Bonson called Buried Alive, A Terrifying History of Our Most Primal Fear. And this is just a fun book, if there is such a thing, about being buried alive, and how the fear of being buried alive, along with the phenomenon itself, has shaped certain kinds of funerary practices, cultural institutions, and even fads over the years. These are a few cultural influences that will help us get an imaginative grip on Harakir as we sketch out the following adventure. Here's the background. The renegade mummy lord Senmet, rival to the pharaoh Ankhtapat, has taken over the pyramid of Usa and now prepares a magical invention, canopic golems. With the construction of canopic golems, thinks Senmet, he will surely be able to take over Harakir and wrest power from the pharaoh Ankhtapat. However, to create canopic golems, Senmet needs some powerful ingredients. He needs some adventurers to begin with. And so, he carefully lured a group of adventurers through the mists of the Shadowfell, through the mists of the Ravenloft, into Harakir. Unfortunately for Senmet, the pharaoh Ankhtapat became wise to Senmet's plans and intercepted the adventurers, destroying Senmet's servants and agents, as well as knocking the adventurers unconscious casting a spell on them to wipe their memories, and then leaving them for dead after burying them alive in the desert. Those adventurers include the PCs, along with four NPC allies, and it is up to the adventurers and their allies to follow a series of clues across Harakir, eventually to find a horrifying truth. In Act 1, the PCs are going to escape their premature burials and eventually fight for their lives, ending up in Muhar. In Act 2, in Muhar, PCs learn a little bit more about what happened to them, and then escape from attack in a boat down the Eternal River towards the Red Oasis. Act 3 takes place over a series of days in which the PCs fight off monsters, and their NPC companions gradually vanish one by one until they are all gone. In Act 4, no sooner than the PCs arrive at the Red Oasis, they are taken prisoner by Yuan-Ti and must escape. 
And finally, in Act 5, the PCs reach the Pyramid of Usa and discover some horrifying truths about their presence in Har Akir. As I mentioned, this adventure will take PCs from levels 9 to 14, and they're going to complete both the Fane of the Night Serpent from Tomb of Annihilation, as well as the Canopic Being from Candlekeep Mysteries. We'll have some alterations to both of those dungeons, in addition to some material that we add ourselves. So, let's get started. In Act 1, the PCs are level 9, and they wake up to discover that they are suffocating. Each of them is alone, under the sands of Harakir, in a wooden coffin, and they are buried alive, slowly suffocating. They need to get out. Ask each of the players what they're doing to escape this dreadful fate, and be very rich and descriptive with your language about how the suffocating dark is bearing down on them. I would be pretty open-minded here. If a player character proposes a certain kind of spell or a skill or the use of a toolkit to aid their escape, let them at least try. Once they claw their way up through the sands, out of their premature burials, the PCs will discover each other, but they have no knowledge of who each other are. Each of the PCs have amnesia. In addition to the PCs, there are four NPCs. We are taking these NPCs from the adventure The Canopic Being for 13th level player characters in Candlekeep Mysteries. Except for their names and some rudimentary understanding of their own abilities and equipment, the PCs have amnesia, as do the friendly NPCs. Their names are Okuzor, Shemru, Zarin, and Mayastun. You should make a character sheet for each of these NPCs and let each of the players control one of them. As DM, you have enough to do, and most players are pretty delighted to control an additional character in addition to their main PC. After the company meet and socialize and begin to introduce each other, they're going to be attacked by a group of mummies and vampire spawn. However, we're going to describe these vampire spawn as having heads that are like those of mummified crocodiles. And everyone, of course, is going to be wearing desert-appropriate garb. So the PCs will have to fight off these crocodile-headed undead along with some mummies. Once they do, and assuming they search the bodies, they'll find that there is a mysterious scroll with some inscrutable markings. Perhaps they're not writings exactly, perhaps it's a coded diagram, but they should be unable to be completely deciphered at this time. What can be deciphered, however, are the PC's names as well as the names of the NPCs. They can see that their own names are inscribed on this scroll. Looking about, the PC should see that there is a very large illuminated village nearby and night is falling. That village is Muhar. And as the PCs make their way to Mahar and eventually reach it, they will level up to 10, and we will move on to Act 2. In Act 2, Muhar is a small but busy village, mostly centered around a temple. And we're going to use the Temple of Tashluta again from the Canopic Being in Candlekeep Mysteries here. We're going to change things a little bit so that Priest Sheer is the highest civic authority beneath High Priestess Rikotep. And he is a secret agent of Senmet against the Pharaoh. He is well aware of Senmet's efforts to acquire adventurers as ingredients in Canopic Golems, and is eager to send the adventurers towards Senmet in the Pyramid of Usa far to the south. We're of course going to change the plot about the PCs looking for missing NPCs. You'll notice that the named NPCs actually correspond to the ones that the PCs in the original adventure were supposed to be finding. After a chat, the priest Sheer will tell the PCs that the scroll contains a message. The message says, Do not let these people reach the Pyramid of Usa. Their power will be too great. Stop them by order of the Pharaoh. Kill them. Left to draw conclusions and talk amongst themselves, the PCs will realize that there may be some power, some destiny for them lying in the Pyramid of Usa. And this is something that the Priest Sheer will encourage them to believe, although not in a way that should seem too suspicious. Play Sheer off as someone who is socially competent and not awkward and not coming across as forced or having an ulterior motive. Sheer will draw a map of Harakir for the PCs and discuss how the easiest way to get to the Pyramid of Usa is down the Eternal River. And it's just at this moment that agents of the Pharaoh Octopot are going to burst into the temple and attack the PCs. We're going to pit the players against a pair of bone claws, and we're going to flavor them so that they have the heads of jackals, or at least the masks of jackals, like Anubis. Now I know two Bone Claws might seem like a lot for level 10 adventurers, but remember, each of the players is controlling not only their PC, but another adventurer who is an NPC. Or at least there are four extra NPCs, I don't know how many people are going to be in your party. So the PCs and their companions will defeat these Bone Claws, and as soon as they do, another, much more formidable wave of the Pharaoh's servants will arrive. At this point, 
The priest Shear will say, Take my boat, take it down the eternal river, and go to the Pyramid of Usa. Find your destiny. I will hold these creatures off. And the PCs will have a chance to run and escape. Maybe you can have a chase scene here as they run down to the harbor and they jump onto a boat which has been previously identified by Priest Shear and they make their way down the river. Level up to 11. And we're on to Act 3. Act 3 is going to take place over a series of days as the PCs travel down the Eternal River. More specifically, it's going to take place over the course of four evenings. At the end of each evening, when the PCs rise after a long rest, they're going to find that one of their friendly NPCs has vanished without a trace. If some of the player characters don't need to sleep, or if they insist on keeping a vigilant watch, let the NPC vanish just as the PC blinks or gets distracted for a second. These disappearances should be inscrutable, they should vanish without a trace, and it should be a building mystery for the PCs. On the first evening, you should have the boat get attacked by a rock. If it isn't sufficiently challenging, make it a two-headed rock that has an extra beak attack. Is going to repeatedly dive bomb the boat, and it'll be up to the PCs to destroy it or at least drive it away. After they fight it and take a long rest, by the next morning they're going to notice that Zarin has vanished. On the second evening, their boat is going to get attacked by a giant zombie crocodile, and we're going to use the statistics for a zombie Tyrannosaurus, we're just going to give it a swim speed, and we're going to say that when it vomits something up, it's not a zombie, but a mummy. This should be a really fun, flavorful fight, and after the PCs win it, they can take another long rest, and when they wake up, they're going to find that Jamru has vanished. On the third night, I would run an encounter from Nerdarchy's book, Out of the Box. It's called The Procession, and it goes something like this. As the PCs continue to head down the river, they encounter a funerary boat. This boat, in fact, is populated by undead creatures, and it is coming from the other side. There are a few whites on board, as well as a magic-using vampire, and they are all decked out in Egyptian garb. You could either have the boat pass by if the PCs ignore it, or you could just have the boat attack the PCs as soon as they come within sight. Either way, it's an eerie and fun encounter, and then, at the end of that evening, after the PCs rest, they'll find that Okuzor has vanished. Finally, during their fourth evening, their last evening, on the boat on the Eternal River, the PC's boat will get attacked by a swarm of mummies, and those mummies will be commanded by a sword wraith captain. All of them will be chanting, Ankh-te-pat, Ankh-te-pat, the name of the pharaoh, as they attack. Assuming the PCs win, they're going to take another rest, and Mayastan, the last NPC ally, will be vanished by the time they wake up. At that point, the PCs will arrive in the Red Oasis, and they'll level up to 12. Act 4 begins in the Red Oasis, a sickly oasis with poisonous waters and toxic plants growing at the edge, and you should let the PCs relax for a little bit, maybe take a short rest, socialize and explore, and then hit them as hard as you can with some UNT abominations. Attack the PCs with wave after wave of UNT abominations until they fall down to zero hit points, and then take them prisoner and run Fane of the Night Serpent from Tomb of Annihilation. The only things you really need to change are first, get rid of the dinosaurs, those are too silly. Secondly, eliminate all references to Cholt and the Tomb of the Nine Gods and everything else in Tomb of Annihilation. And finally, you might want to just describe the pyramid that you're in as being more of a smooth, triangular-style Egyptian pyramid than a step pyramid. Once the PCs successfully escape from the Fane of the Night Serpent, they level up to 13 and we are on to Act 5, the final act in our Har Akir adventure. In Act 5, once the PCs successfully escape from the Fane of the Night Serpent, they have only to travel a short distance before reaching the Pyramid of Usa, and once they reach it, they can find a way inside. Once they're inside, just run the dungeon that is called Valen's Lair from the Canopic Being in Candlekeep Mysteries. We're just going to make the following changes. First, instead of Valen, we're going to have Senmet. Secondly, and most importantly, the canopic golems are going to be horrifying stitched up remains of the NPCs which disappeared along the journey along the Eternal River. That's right, those beloved NPCs which the PCs made friends with and the players got to control, which they traveled with, and who vanished, are now going to reappear as horrible cadaverous golems. Magical golems, which the PCs will have to fight and defeat. It'll be really scary, it'll be great. We're also going to want to add a bunch of traps and monsters in the very long hallways, which is this dungeon. You can take a look at the book Treacherous Traps. That's a pretty fun monster manual of traps, if there is such a thing. And when it comes to the final BBEG encounter, 
why not double Senmet's hit points? Also, don't follow the advice of changing up her spell list. Guardian of Faith and Insect Plague are both really good spells to use if you're running a mummy lord. Most crucially, be sure to keep the horrifying element of the adventure that, in order to truly destroy Senmet, you would have to kill the innocent NPC Alyssa, who obliviously contains Senmet's heart as a living vessel. That is just a fun and horrifying moral dilemma to cap the whole adventure off with. Assuming the PCs defeat Senmet or somehow escape, that concludes our adventure. If the PCs killed Senmet, then the Pharaoh Octopot will soon learn about it and be interested in the PCs. Maybe he will send agents to track them down. Additionally, Senmet is not the Dark Lord of Har Akir, and so could not prevent the PCs from leaving. It could well be that the domain is open when the PCs defeat Senmet and they could just leave. So our adventure permits either a sequel or for this to be the last that the PCs see of Harakir. Either way, what do you think of this adventure? Do you agree with me that some of the most horrifying things about stories featuring mummies are actually body horror? Or would you go in a different direction with it? How about the Dark Lord Octopot himself? You'll notice that I didn't feature him in this adventure. Would you have? How would you have? Also, which other domain should I cover in the future? Let me know in the comments. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And also don't forget to hit the bell icon if you want notifications about the weekly content that I update on this channel. Thanks very much.